Hey there, welcome to another edition of the Night Sky this week. It's October 23rd, 2023. Welcome on aboard. Thanks for joining me wherever you are around the world. I love to hear where you're watching from, so please put it in the comments. I love to see where all my stargazing friends are and where you're watching from and what your experiences are with uh, watching the night sky. In this show, we talk about basically some of the highlights that are coming up that are easy to see with the naked eye. You might not be a big sky watching uh, person, somebody who has a lot of experience. Maybe you have no experience and that's great because this show is for you. This is a show that is really just to give you some uh, ideas of what you can see throughout the week give you a, a lay of the land, so to speak, uh, in terms of the constellations, the planets, the moon, all of that, and and some extras, always some surprises happening too. Every few weeks, you'll see some things that are, that are new. And I'd also love to hear from you about what you'd like to see on the show too, what topics you'd like me to cover as well. Love to hear ideas all the time. And if you find value in this show, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It sure means a lot. Whether you're watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, I'd love for you to follow me. It means a lot. It help your, It shows that you support this and you find value to it. And uh, it allows me to bring it for free into your home every week. So without further ado, why don't we just dive right in? Hey, you guys, uh, have you seen the... Um, the uh, did you see over the weekend the beautiful meteor shower, the Orionid meteor shower? Did you catch any shooting stars, any meteors? I'd love to hear that uh, in the comments. Share that if you saw a few of the shooting stars this past weekend. I was completely washed out here in Montreal, Canada. It was like dark, dreary. Uh, oh my gosh, just too much. But the colors on the trees are magnificent let me just share something here with you like a picture i was just walking my dogs and it was just incredible i gotta show you this this picture uh it's 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 like gorgeous look at look at these colors here i'm just gonna put this back here look at that look can't i don't know if you can see it. it's on my phone Whoa, there just gorgeous to see the colors are starting to come in on the trees you can see it right behind me as well too uh it's just gorgeous uh, this is the my favorite time. There's no mosquitoes, no black flies. Uh, the haze is minimal. So to watch the sky, it's really perfect in my neck of the woods this time of the year. In the September, October into early November, I love watching the sky this time of the year. 
because it's not too cold just yet. So here we are. It's Monday, October 23rd. This is what the sky looks like from the 45th degree latitude north. That's most around. This is the view that you'd have uh, oriented pretty much the same way anywhere across the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, the orientation is going to be different, of course, for you. But the 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 objects that you'll see will be similar, especially when it comes to solar system objects. So uh, so hang on there and let's see what's uh, what's out there. So looking towards the west after sunset. Uh, this is going to be really nice. You have Arcturus still visible. I mentioned this giant ice cream cone. Remember last week? If you if you missed that um, the uh, the post that I did last week, check it out. Go back and you'll see it's a beautiful ice cream cone shaped constellation called Bootis right there. It's just fading away now in the west. So early evening, catch it about an hour after sunrise. This is uh, sunset, I should say, an hour after sunset. This is the view this week. You'll see that giant ice cream cone. This is called Bootis, a myth myth uh, Greek mythological uh, constellation. And then if we turn towards the south, look what we have here. So on Monday night, October 23rd, you're going to have the moon posing with a planet. And in this case, it's Saturn. And what's really, really neat here is that if you haven't seen Saturn, Saturn's one of those planets that really shine in a small backyard telescope. So if you've never seen it before, do avail yourself. It's easy to find tonight, October 23rd, Monday, because it's hanging around the moon. So this is a great pairing, two solar system objects, vastly different, of course. The moon is very, very close. Moon is uh, uh, on average about 400,000 kilometers away from us, while Saturn, get this, is, let's see, right now it's 1.3 billion kilometers away, and it takes light 76 minutes to reach your eye. And all the action here is taking place in the zodiacal constellation of Aquarius. That's where Saturn and the moon are hanging out together in the skies. This is in the southeast. As soon as it gets dark tonight, take a look on Monday night. This is where the moon will be. Remember, we just got off of a beautiful uh, eclipse, right? That was on the 14th of October. So it's almost like nine days, 10 days away. Uh, that the uh, And it's heading towards uh a full moon and at the end of this week i'll talk more about it in a few minutes is a lunar eclipse which you want to look out for that'll be fun so that's what we'll end um just stay tuned there'll be more information on that so this is monday night the moon the moon is really what's fun to watch as it's skipping across the sky from night to night and pairing up with different things in the sky i love doing this because this is really a great way for beginners for casual sky watchers just to get the a feel of the night sky and getting to feel accomplishment of, of, of finding things. It's really important to get those winds under our belt when we're learning about the night sky, feeling that you can accomplish something. Don't be overwhelmed. It's easy. There's the moon, there's Saturn. If you have a telescope, you can see the rings of Saturn and it's going to look something like this. You'll see the rings, the actual rings, just like in the magazines, like in the National Geographic issue, you'll actually see it in the eyepiece of a telescope. It's really, really cool. Now, if we jump uh, to the next day, Tuesday evening, you'll see the moon has now popped on to the other side of Saturn. So Tuesday, October 24th, this is the view that you'll get. Still within the constellation of Aquarius, but the moon has now jumped from one side of Saturn to the next. It's a really great way also to see the celestial mechanics of the solar system at play. The movement of the moon as it orbits the Earth is uh, clearly uh, visible uh, in, in that sense. So look at the, the pairing. It's just gorgeous. Now, if we continue on with the journey of 
of, uh, of uh, from the daily journey of the moon, you'll see it's now a gibbous moon. This is by Wednesday, October 25th. Here's another observing challenge if you have a telescope or binoculars. Neptune, the most distant giant planet in the solar system, dominant planet in the solar system, is the most distant one, Neptune, will be right next to the gibbous moon the waxing gibbous moon waxing meaning that it's growing in its phase gibbous means that more than half of the disk is visible to us here on earth you can see that close up i'm going to zoom in a little bit more it's hanging now in, around in the constellation pisces another zodiacal constellation that is kind of like the pathway the zodiacal constellations are the pathway or highway of the moon and planets that's where you're going to find them and uh so that's a little tip of which direction of the skies you need to look at and in this case we're talking about the southeast early in the evening and check out what's on to the left of this pair guys you see in the east you've got beautiful jupiter so just keep an eye on that that's where the action will happen when the lunar eclipses just watch this so this is wednesday night the moon is next to neptune and then then there's this lull where the moon is kind of sandwiched almost exactly between this is thursday october 26th in the evening sky look where the moon is it's pretty much in between jupiter right jupiter over here and saturn onto the other side right almost exactly in the middle so the moon is in the constellation pisces and you can see uh to one side is super brilliant jupiter and not quite as bright as Jupiter, but Saturn nevertheless being still easily seen with the naked eye. I mean, these three objects, solar system objects, Jupiter, Moon, and Saturn, all of them are visible to the naked eye. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, needing binoculars for these or uh, having to get out to the countryside. Forget it. You can be downtown uh in an apartment building and on your balcony looking out and seeing this so it's really cool lovely to see folks from all over the place even fe fellow uh, quebecers we have etienne nice of you to join us uh laureen from northern alberta uh joanne from uh uh in northern quebec we've got uh, adriana from uh italy We've got Rene. Hello, Rene from Denmark. So nice of you to join us. And of course, Suna from Turkey. Wonderful as always for you to join me on this exploration. And that's what we're doing. We're exploring the night sky together. And it's not hard to do. It's so easy to do. And I love, I'm so happy to be your guide and give you some ideas of what to see this week. So Again, this is Thursday, October 26. We move on. The moon is still within the Pisces constellation on Thursday evening, but closing in on that giant planet Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. And from night to night, you can watch it as it's approaching. And let's not forget, on Saturday night is the lunar eclipse. So we're heading there. So Friday night, the night, the night before, about 24 hours before the lunar eclipse, the near full moon is going to be competing for attention with Jupiter in the eastern sky at night. So when you're out walking the dog or you're driving or you're, you know, you're looking towards the east, you look out the window and you're looking towards the east, by Friday night, you are going to see these two magnificently brilliant objects dominating that ev early evening. Just a wonderful sight so beautiful and here we are on saturday night is when the moon turns into a full uh it's full um uh phase so it's a full moon and that's going to happen precisely at 4 24 p.m eastern time okay that's about that's about 20 24 universal time but 4 24 p.m. in the afternoon, Eastern time is when officially we reach the full phase for the moon. And that's what you're seeing here as it will look like after sunset rising in the east. So as the sun sets in the west, look towards the east for this pairing. And uh, all the action happens in the constellation Aries the Ram, another zodiacal constellation, guys. As I've said, that's the pathway for the moon and 
uh, all the planets. That's the highway of the planets and the moon. And so the pair is just going to be gorgeous. And remember, we're heading towards a on that night, you're going to experience Saturday night, uh, October 28th, is when we have that partial lunar eclipse. So let me go into that a little bit with you guys. If we turn to my favorite website where I like to get timing, time, time, time for everything that, that's astronomical, timeanddate.com, a great website. My friends there uh, have really got it together. They are... Uh, we. As of Monday right now, as of this live stream, we're four days, 23 hours, and 25 minutes for the partial lunar eclipse to begin on Saturday. So why is this a partial eclipse? What's the difference between the partial and total? Partial means that only part of the disk of the moon is entering the shadow of the Earth. Remember that the when we're talking about... Um, uh, lunar eclipses, let me show you. I'm going to show you what it looks like from the solar system view. Okay, so here we're magically going away. I'm going to show you why, what's going on, the, how these actors, celestial actors, are positioned. So there's the moon. We're going to go above the plane of the solar system, and I'll show you where the moon is. You can see there uh, is the moon, the earth, that green line is the pathway that you're seeing, the pathway of the uh, of the earth, right? And uh, that green line over there. And if I zoom out, there's the sun. So check this out. So you see what I'm talking about? We've got the earth, the moon, and if I zoom in this way, look what happens. Look how they're aligned. Do you see that? There's the moon. We're at the back of the moon, so you can't see the disk of the moon very clearly, but there it is, right? And there's the sun in front of us, and there's the earth. You see that they're aligned? See, if I kind of zoom zoom back out from above, the, there we go, a little bit better. You can see there's the sun, there's the earth, there's the moon. So you have that alignment. That alignment is when you have a lunar eclipse. Remember two weeks ago, you had on the October 14th, you had what? A solar eclipse. What's the difference? Solar eclipse is when the moon is between the sun and the earth. It's on this side. You see the, the orbit of the moon here? It's The moon would be here for a solar eclipse. The moon hides the sun. But what we're experiencing on October 28th, this coming Saturday, the moon is going to be on the other side of the sun from our, from Earth, right? So Earth is sandwiched between the moon and the sun. And so the shadow of our planet is cast onto the surface of the moon. That's what you're going to be seeing is that our planet's shadow, see now I've got the, the sun is behind us in this particular view. The Earth is here and you see the little moon right there is going to cast the shadow. And look what's behind the moon, guys. Look Lo and behold, who do we have? Jupiter. There you go. I hope this explains to you why Jupiter looks close this Saturday in our skies to the moon. Why is the moon and Jupiter close? Because they are lined up from our vantage point here. We're all on this little blue marble here, and uh, we see the planet far away behind the moon, uh, just happens to coincide. So it's an optical illusion that they're close. They're not physically close. They're actually hundreds of millions of kilometers between the moon and Jupiter, right? Between the moon and Jupiter. This There's like hundreds of millions of kilometers uh, between us, Jupiter's just off the screen here, you can see, and uh, the moon. So it just happens to look like that. From our vantage point here, as I'm showing you here, there's Jupiter, there's the moon. They just look like they're close together. But now I hope you understand what the, the, the lay of the land is for this Saturday when the eclipse happens. So let's go back to the timing. So the shadow of the Earth is going to take a bite out of the moon right here. See that? This is called the umbral. This, this, this circle, it's actually a circle, but we're looking at a semicircle here, the northern part of the shadow. This is the shadow of the Earth, the inner shadow, which is very dark. And when the moon completely goes in there, we get a total lunar eclipse. But this Saturday, October 28th, that's not going to happen. We're going to have a more modest partial lunar eclipse because partial because only a little bite of the moon, about 12% of the disk of the moon will be in the inside dark shadow 
of the of the earth and you see this outer cone right here this is the penumbral shadow of the earth it's a kind of an outer uh, lighter shadow cone and of, of our planet and the moon will get slightly darker because it's going to be completely inside this outer penumbral shadow cone but a tiny bit 12 percent of it it's actually going into the darker cone the umbral shadow and you'll definitely see that darken that bite now where do you need to be on this saturday to see this on planet earth well let's take a look anywhere on this map where it's red is the folks that will get to see it people who are in the red portion of this map will get to see a part of the clip all or part of it the beginning the entire or the last part of the eclipse so you can see most of the eastern uh atlantic provinces of canada like uh, in quebec uh and nova scotia pei new brunswick all those places uh will be able to see it as will a large part of uh, South America, uh, places like Brazil will get to see it, definitely. Uh, all of Africa, Europe, and Asia, and Australia, and the parts of the South Pacific as well, will get to see uh, this partial lunar eclipse. Um, and you can see that the magnitude is 0.12, about 12%. A fraction of the moon's diameter is going to be in the umbral cone. All the action starts really to see the maximum eclipse, the most dramatic. Mark this down, folks. It's at 2014 universal time. So for me here, it's 4, 14 p.m. I am not going to be able to see this from Montreal because it's going to be below my horizon. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to give this over to you guys in the chat and i want you guys to find out for your own city wherever you are what the conditions will be for in the sky for this eclipse when to see it but it's basically at 2014 is the maximum that's when you'll see this biggest bite taken out of the moon uh, at 2014 for me unfortunately the moon is going to be below the horizon it will not have risen yet uh, and in fact it'll be over the eclipse by the time uh, I get uh, by the time it uh, rises above my eastern horizon here in Montreal. So if uh, you're watching at the Atlantic provinces or somewhere in uh, Brazil, for instance, you'll get to see it anytime, anywhere in Africa you may be or, or in Europe, or Asia, Middle East, anywhere there, Australia, uh, you'll be able to see this. In fact, New Zealand won't be able to see it. It's very interesting. That's op being past the shadow line right there. So I've sent the, the link to you guys so that you can see it for yourself. I think it's really uh, a neat thing to be able to see. And let's just not forget that also uh, really making this very special this Saturday is that the moon is gonna be beside Jupiter. It'll be a really knock your socks off beautiful event. And remember, this is a full moon, right, uh, on Saturday. And it's called the Hunter's Moon. Uh, in North America. This is traditionally according to the uh, old farmer's almanac. And this is the time period where hunters used to go out and hunt uh, game, wildlife, uh, this time of the year, uh, un even under the moonlight, uh, guiding them. So that's where the name comes from, the hunter's moon, full moon, beautiful. In the month of October, uh, we close off. And if we kind of go into Sunday to close off the show, the moon just one day past its full moon phase past the eclipse will be next to uranus uh this is a beautiful pairing as well perfect for binoculars great for even better with telescopes uranus is usually is technically visible to the naked eye from a very dark site but uh because the moon is near full it will be very challenging because of the brightness of the full moon so try using binoculars or a telescope and look for a green dot next to the moon if it's green that is uranus and you should be able to see it even in suburban skies as long as you've got a telescope or binoculars to cut through that glare of the moon uh and look and lo and behold next to the moon way off there again with binoculars perfect in the const this is all happening in the constellation taurus uh sunday night look there's the pleiades star cluster and look what happens by monday night monday night Next week, 
This is October 30th, the day before Halloween. Uh, the Eve, Halloween Eve, basically, is uh, you'll see the, the moon next to the Pleiades star cluster. I'll talk more about it next week and talk more about uh, all kinds of Halloween-y kind of stuff that you can see in the sky. Really neat. I've, uh, I'll, I'll share some cool stuff regarding sky watching during Halloween which is fun. <laughs> so anyways, busy, busy skies. Try to see the eclipse. Love to hear your experience about it. Share it on my timeline. I'll definitely be, be putting out posts uh, regarding these. Uh, please, if you find value in this, uh, in this uh, live stream, please share it and give it a thumbs up and do subscribe or follow me if you haven't. Uh, that's the best way not to miss any of my content that comes out almost on a daily basis every uh, every week. So uh, I'd love to be have you on board and be part of my stargazing community. We're stronger together. It's a great hobby. It's easy to use. And I love to be your guide to get into understanding what the cosmos is about. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you next week. And until next time, I wish all of you stay safe and healthy. And of course, wishing you clear skies. Bye-bye.